that's me, Dr. Roy Bradshaw. I'm from the School of Geography. Uh, I'm also the admissions student, so if you've got any specific questions about admissions and geography, I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, um, geography traditionally is a subject which looks very much at um, the physical environment and the human environment and the interactions between the two. So we've seen uh, this last week flooding. Okay, it's natural, it's too much rain. But it is also, we're interested in it because it affects people. And it's sort of all of that interaction which keeps geographers going. Uh, curiously enough, one of our um, professors, Colin Thorne, is a world expert on flooding. He's a World Bank uh, chap. In fact, some of his students at the moment are out uh, at Vicksburg, having the American Corps of Engineers with Mississippi. And I think last year they were out on the Brahma Putra in Bangladesh. So we, uh, we do do these things, and we're actually very employable, uh, and our expertise is uh, very much welcomed. Okay, let me just run through. I'm going to run through very quickly because I, I'm aware that uh, there's a limited amount of time we've got. I'm going to flash through quite a lot of data and information uh, at very high speed, and there's some photographs. Um, please don't worry about the, the details. If you're interested, come up to geography. You'll see a lot more there. We can give you information sheets and whatever else. But uh, I, rather than detaining you too long, I'll just flash through these fairly quickly. Okay, we're a fairly large school, 500-plus undergraduates, master's students, it's now near 40 academic staff. Uh, and so on. So we're quite a big school, which does mean that we can uh, do quite a lot of activities. We've got expertise in environmental change in, uh, oh, you'll see in a minute or two. But that's one of the advantages being quite, uh, quite big. We're also regarded as a high quality department, uh, very good assessments in our teaching. In fact, I happen to know that we uh, scooped the pool quite easily in geography. And we've also got a five in the research uh, exercise. So, so we're assessed as being very good for what that's worth. Right, we run a, a series of degree courses. The ones that are most interested here are the Single Honours uh, Geography BSc, and also we have a BA Geography Business and the Environment, which is looking at the relationship between business and environmental uh, activities and uh, turning out people who are able then to go into business and, and uh, work on things like ISO 14000 standards, etc. We also run these other courses, and there's quite a lot of environment in there. In fact, Geography with Chinese Studies, uh, this is our students out on the North China, uh, Outer Mongolian border. Uh, and although it looks like a, a raid of Mongol hordes, in fact, all except one of those students, uh, are those people are our students. So we're out looking at desertification processes uh, in northern China. So all the degrees have environmental uh, uh, elements within them. Okay, very briefly, the undergraduate course, it's very similar for most departments, but the basic teaching unit is the module, and the students have to uh, select a number of modules. Uh, each module has 10 or 20 credits to it, uh, and you have to do 120 credits per year. So uh, you'll hear the term modules used quite a lot, and some are compulsory, core modules, some are optional, uh, and that's, uh, and we give pathways so that you can select modules, so that you end up the sort of degree you want. Year one for us is a common year, and everybody does it, partly because we get students from all over the world, and we also get students from different A-levels, uh, and I, uh, international bachelor and so on. So it's a, a if you like, a levelling up year, and also, also it's a, uh, a skilling year. So a lot of this is giving everybody the skills they need to go on to get the degree and to go on to do other things. So Earth Environmental Dynamics, Geographical Information Science, Interpreting Geographical Data, Exploring Human Geography, Study Skills Tutorials, Field Courses, whatever. Plus also 20 credits of options which can be taken outside geography. So if you want to carry on doing French or something like that, then you, you, you will have your opportunity to do that. Year two, uh, it's where it starts to get a bit more uh, busy. Uh, you either do a course in physical or in human uh, geography techniques, and then there's quite a lot of, of BA uh, human geography uh, modules and BSc uh, physical geography modules. But note that even on the human geography, you've got environment, and the word environment keeps creeping in. So we do look at the uh, interconnections between, as I say, the physical and the human uh, spheres of activity. And then in year three, um, there's a couple of things that everyone has to do, global issues and problems, which would be where students actually select the topics they're going to study. Uh, it could be global warming or the uh, geopolitics in the Middle East or something like that. They also have to do a course on history, philosophy, and geography. This one is important, the dissertation. Uh, so where a student will select a topic to study, we'll uh, go out, do the field work, write it up, and we ask for a very professional final uh, 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 document, 10,000 word document, um, and that, uh, that's the dissertation. Apart from that, again, we have uh, human geography options and physical geography options. 
But again, notice that even in the human geography, uh, you've got things like environmental security or landscape ecology creeping in. So it's, it's a mixed picture. Um, there's no clear distinction uh, in, in that sense as far as uh, um, environment is concerned. And to help students through, we give them these pathway sheets. This is about a couple of years old, uh, and it's slightly changed since then. But uh, we do try and help our students to make sure they select the modules which are going to be helpful to them. Uh, modules are assessed in a variety of ways. You just got to get through year one, but year two, which is really where you um, start to uh, specialise, counts for about a third of your final assessment, and year three, the, the other two thirds. That's fairly common throughout the university. One of the things we put a lot of emphasis on is study abroad, and we have two schemes, the traditional Erasmus Socrates scheme, and then this University S21 scheme, which uh, we uh, take part in. And students can go to one of these other universities to study for a semester, um, and that's useful because you can go, uh, this is Sally dancing a dance or something up in uh, Whistler near uh, Vancouver, but it does allow students to go to different environments and to study uh, 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 things which we can't do here in the East Midlands. This is Charlie, who's actually our very first uh, exchange student. Um, he's just come back from the Great Barrier Reef and he's allegedly writing up his notes afterwards. But within two weeks of leaving here, he'd, he'd actually sent me back information saying, you know, the Great Barrier Reef with Professor so-and-so, 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 these are the world experts on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, that is a wonderful opportunity and we do encourage our students to do that. Uh, similarly, this is Alice in uh, New Zealand. Actually, that's yeah, and uh, Ruth, also in South Island, New Zealand. But it does, does mean that you, you can actually go and work with other experts around the world, and we think that's very good. Right, so that's really the structure of the course. Just to give you a, a little visual idea of what we do, this is the field course. This is both scale Tarn. First year field course, students sort of sitting on a hill. They're going to be working out on the hillside uh, doing total station uh, uh, studies. In fact, I think we can see some students here. They're... Uh, um, going to put that information inside the computer and then on the basis of that you can, this is actually a, these are the spots where the students are standing. Um, what they've done is to recreate this, this is not a photograph, this is a virtual image of both uh, scale time and uh, so that's all computer generated and then on that you can start to do interesting things, for example here they're trying to reconstruct the shape of the glacier which would have eroded that time. Um, I accept that glaciers come in one colour not the uh, gaudy colours we've got there, but the, the, the principle is that you're actually using the computer to try and help you understand how the landscape uh, evolved. This is on the Techniques in Physical Geography course held in North Wales. Um, you can tell it's North Wales. I always think this looks like those sort of buckets and mops they are going to clean up the landscape or something, but uh, anyway, apparently that kit is used. I think there we are. We've seen them getting creepy crawlers out of the, um, out of the stream, so they're working on... Uh, species, and that apparently a student's posing, I'm told. I uh, didn't know what that was, but they said it's a student posing. Students looking at glacial tills. Um, and well, locally, this is down at Attenborough, it's about two miles away from here. This is a gravel, uh, a former gravel uh, bed, and it's now a lake, and they're taking sediments here. The, the idea of taking the sediments are that you can look at uh, environmental history up and down the column of the sediments. Uh, that's, if you go up to our labs now, you'll see students who are actually analysing some of that stuff. Um, yeah, some of those students, in fact, uh, this chap's running the lab there, so if you go up to geography, you'll meet Ian. Uh, coastal management field course, uh, this is up in uh, the Isle of uh, Mull, uh, and we have many other courses. What I'm not showing you is that we've actually got students out, I think, at Krakatoa at the moment, and on Honduras, uh, doing uh, work for their uh, projects. Uh, and many other places as well. We also have a master's course, uh, master's courses, let me see. One is environmental management, there's about 30, 40 students on that every year, and a new course on environmental history, first in the world, uh, I think it's about five or six people on that. And quite a lot of our physical geographies go on to that, those master's courses to get the topping up uh, in qualifications so they can go on to a career in industry, environmental agencies, and all the other things. Any questions briefly now, or? Okay, I'll hold off at that point and we'll, I'll hand over to my colleague.